In this session, we'll be taking a look at one way of constructing a good feeling, yet simple to maintain, hover car mechanic. Topics we'll be covering are how to achieve a flexible hovering effect, how to control the hover car, a simple camera tracking method, and also adding a little bit of polish to the mechanic. Let's get started with the basics of the hovering effect. So let's take a closer look at the actual car that we have in the scene. Here we go. So there's a few different ways that we can actually achieve a hovering effect. As you can see, I've placed the car slightly above the surface. And the first way I tackled this was actually putting a collision box underneath the car and just making it invisible and having the car sit on top of what are effectively invisible wheels. But that felt a little clunky and rough. Another way you could do this is actually selecting the car and in the rigid body constraints freeze its position so that it won't fall to the ground. However, that will prevent you from being able to do cool things like adding speed bumps or jumps or things like that. So the solution I actually went with is a thruster system. If you take a look at the bottom of the car, you can see I have four thrusters, little cylinders, one in each corner. And if you look at the car in the hierarchy, you'll see that there are indeed two thrusters in the front and two thrusters in the back. Now these thrusters on their own don't really do anything, but I did attach a script to the car object, as you can see here, called thruster script. And if we open that up, we'll actually see the script that controls the thrust of the car is quite simple. I have a few public variables for thruster strength and thruster distance, which determine how much force each thruster puts out and over what distance. And then I've put a, an array to hold the four thrusters in. What I do in the fixed update loop is I iterate in a for each loop over every thruster and I do a raycast. I do a raycast from the thruster position and I raycast downwards, which is the inverse of up, and I do the raycast for the thruster distance. I then calculate what percentage the distance is if the raycast collides. So if the raycast is touching just at the very edge of its range, it's a very low percentage. But if the thruster is touching the ground very, very close, it's 100% thrust. I then calculate the thrust by saying I want upward thrust, I multiply by the strength of the thruster, and again by the distance that the thruster is. I then modify the thrust by multiplying the delta time and the vehicle's mass so that I can make other tweaks elsewhere in the game and not have this script need to be rewritten. I then simply apply the force at position, which is very important. We want the thruster to actually apply a force upwards where the thruster is, not at the center of the rigid body. And that's it. I mean, these four are completely handled by this small script right here. Now I'll give you a look at what this feels like in game. You can see my car is actually hovering here. And I'm going to go over the controls in a second, but you can see when I actually go over the speed bump here, it tilts upwards and even rolls backwards. And you can go over speed bumps. But obviously that's not everything that's going on here. We also have the car's controller to think about. So in addition to the thruster script, which just handles all of the upward momentum of the thrusters, we have a car controller script. Now the car controller script does sit on our car object. You can see it right here. And I've populated it with some of our uh, values that we'll be using. The car controller script handles the acceleration and the rotation of the car as opposed to the thrusters which just keep it aloft. You can see it's a fairly simple script. It all fits on one page here. I have a few variables declared at the top. We deal exclusively in the fixed update loop. One of the first things we do in the fixed update loop is we run a raycast to see if the vehicle is actually close to the ground, within three units of the ground. If the vehicle is close to the ground, we actually set the rigid body's drag to equal one which will help us decelerate when we let go of the controls. 
We also calculate what the forward force is going to be, which is the forward vector plus an acceleration variable that we declare. And we go by the get axis vertical, which is by default in Unity the up and down arrows on the W and S keys. We then modify the force by delta time and the rigid body mass, which is the mass of the vehicle. That way we can edit the mass of the vehicle and we can change the way the physics work in the game without having to rewrite the script. We then apply the force. If, on the other hand, we are not close to the ground, say we've taken a jump and we're airborne, we don't act on the vertical axis. We don't allow the player to accelerate when they're in the air. However, we do reduce drag to zero so that when you leave the ramp, you don't come to a stop due to what would appear to be air friction and just fall to the ground halfway over the gap. Right below, we turn the vehicle depending on your horizontal axis, which is the left and right arrow keys. We calculate the torque by calculating the rotation rate by the horizontal axis, which is defined as a public variable. And we again correct this force for the rigid body mass and delta time, and we apply the torque to the rigid body. This gives us a nice fluid turning sensation. I'll give you another demonstration of how this is actually playing out. You see when I press forward and backward, it's simply applying a forward and backward force to the vehicle. When I press left and right, you can see the vehicle turns and pivots left and right on the spot. Now you'll notice when I'm turning, and even when I'm accelerating, the camera is lagging a little bit, which gives a bit more motion feeling to the camera and makes it feel a bit more natural. So let's take a look at how the camera following script is working. You can see on the main camera, we have a script called track object with a few public variables populated. Let's open that up and take a look. Again, it's very, very simple. We have a few variables declared at the top and we're acting entirely in the fixed update loop. We're going to calculate the position to place the camera, which we're saying is going to be the target's position. The target is the car in this case. And we're going to move it by distance back, which is a variable that we've declared. We're then going to place a new position on the Y scale. This elevates the camera by distance up, but we're also throwing in a minimum height function so that the camera never dips below the floor. We then move the camera to that position in this line here. However, you'll notice that we're not moving the camera directly to that position. We can do that pretty easily, which would look just like this. You can see the camera is locked directly behind the car, and when the car accelerates or turns, the camera immediately follows with it. You can see the camera is exactly where we told it to be, which is good, but it doesn't feel very dynamic. So what we've done instead of just directly setting to new position, what we've done is we've used the vector3 smooth damp function. The smooth damp function is a really handy function that acts like lerp, which you may have used. It takes the current position and it takes the new position that you'd like to be in. It uses a reference variable that we declare so that it can retain its velocity. And then we feed it a value, a float value, that determines how long the camera will take to go from where it is to where you want it to be. In this case, I'm saying 0.18 seconds. And you'll see the difference now when we play again. You can see now when we turn, the camera slightly lags behind the turning of the vehicle. And also, as you accelerate, the camera lags, and when you reverse, the camera lags as well. This gives the vehicle a much more dynamic feeling than you would otherwise get. So let's take a look at the rest of the code here. We don't just want to move the camera, we also want to point the camera in the right direction. Now you could point the camera directly at the car, but then you'd be staring just at the car and you might not be staring in the direction that you're actually heading. So what we've done is we've actually defined the focal point to be the car's position plus moving a point forward by five units. So the camera is actually looking slightly ahead of the front bumper. And we just simply call transform look at the focal point. Nice and simple, and that keeps the camera on track looking at the right thing. 
I've actually experimented with pointing the camera towards where the rigid body's velocity is actually taking you. So the camera's actually looking at where the car is headed as opposed to where it's pointed. However, when you're flying around with a hover car, you can actually face in a very different direction than when you're heading. That function may work with a regular car, but it doesn't really work with a hover car system. So let's take a look at this motion again when we're turning the car. Notice when we turn left and right, the car banks slightly with the left and right motion. Let's take a look at how we accomplish that effect. That's back in car controller. You can see the turning script here all it does is it takes your left and right arrow keys and adds torque to the vehicle. This is not what's causing the rotation. We're actually faking the rotation. You see in the final bit of code here, we actually calculate using mathf.smoothdamp angle, which is very similar to the vector 3 smooth damp I was just talking about. We take the Z rotation of the vehicle and we calculate a new rotation based on turn rotation angle, which is a public variable that we've previously defined. And then we set the transform to rotate to this new rotation. So what this does is it actually takes the current rotation of the vehicle and it amplifies it a little bit depending on if you're pressing the left or right arrow keys. It amplifies it by the turn rotation amount, which you can see in the inspector. I've actually set the maximum angle to be about 25 degrees, and the vehicle seeks that speed after about a quarter of a second. So you can see, as I'm pressing left and right, the angle banks, produces a very nice effect. Now, there's a nice upside to this effect, when you bank to the left or to the right, the thrusters on the left or the right side become closer or farther away from the floor and actually affect your velocity. So there's a nice feedback loop there that helps make the car feel much more dynamic and like it's actually hovering. So that's one way you can spice up the vehicle. That's one way you can make the game feel a little bit more dynamic and a little bit better. But what else can we do? Well, is always my favorite. You can always add bloom to the scene, which is a nice feature that is easily available in Unity Pro. You can see I've added a bloom script here. I'm just going to enable that. I'm also going to turn on trail rendering for the car. You can see I have the back thrusters highlighted here, and I'm going to enable a trail renderer that I've previously set up. And let's see how this looks in comparison. All right, so here we go. You can see I've got the nice bloom going. Got this really neat uh, trail renderer coming out the back thrusters there. See that it's leaving a nice path behind me. And it really adds to the sense of speed and the bloom adds a bit to the uh, science fiction-y kind of feel that a hover car would probably invoke. So as you can see, this looks quite a bit better and it's quite a bit more interesting and visually stimulating Having the trail there makes it feel really cool to just drive around and uh, just the act of driving becomes fun. Anyway, I hope you would enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for your time and see you again soon.